Hello, everybody. It's Josh Willis again here in uh, at Midland, Michigan, where we've been doing this series of, of uh, videos. And uh, I want to go back to the original uh, text that I used when Doc and I talked recently about what I believe, what's prompting me to kind of confront the the idea of having so many talented, strong, prophetic people, and I don't hear the warning. I don't, I, you know, uh, I've been recently studying old films on, of all things, tsunamis, and I'll never forget it, the day, it was in December the 26th, 2004, when in Indonesia, a 9.1 uh, category earthquake hit in the ocean. And uh, those things, when those plates slip by each other, they raise the, the surface of the ocean, pushes all that water up. It sucks all the water off the beach. It's called a receding waterline or shoreline. And all the curious, they've, they've been frolicking in the ocean, playing. Been, it's, it's a day after Christmas, having a good time. They got the world by the tail. And uh, they didn't realize that there was a wave coming, almost 100 feet high, traveling at the speed of a 747 jet. And before they had time to blink, it had went inland 30 miles. It hit 14 different countries. It killed 230,000 people and left 150,000 missing they never found. And they were just having a good time. They were, they were, they thought when the water receded, they just need to, go out and go, the beach was getting bigger. But unbeknownst to them, out of sight, out off the shoreline, in the ocean, extreme trouble was coming. There's a book in the Bible in the back called the Book of Revelation. It's called the Tribulation Period. It's a seven-year period. It hasn't happened yet. There's going to be an evacuation of all the believers before that that happens. Because I believe we have not been appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. So I've been recently studying and talking with Doc. I believe in his prophetic office, and we talked about this before I ever came here. I talked to my pastor about it. I pastored for uh, almost 40 years, had a program for uh, the addicted uh, 34, 35 years. And so that was my life. Now I'm be, soon be 77 years old, and God has appointed me. Uh, to this portion of life, whatever long it is or until he comes, to warn people, like a watchman, to be able to see something coming and say something about it. And I started, I started literally studying prophecy the day I got saved, Daniel Revelation compared. I didn't even remember how I got home the night before that, but the guy uh, loved Jesus, loved me, and wanted me to know it. And I kindly tried to keep track of it. Now I've been pointed to a portion of scripture, and I see it. I don't hear the voices of people uh, encouraging people to prepare. Heaven's a prepared place for prepared people. You know, the, the scripture says in uh, Hosea, prepare to meet your God. That means to make ready. And uh, I have not seen or heard, neither entered into the heart of a man to think that God has prepared for them that love him. And so I think there's a real lack of preparation due to the fact that people think that things are going to get better and better and better because, hey, we got AI now, they're going to fix everything. You know, they're going to fix your job, your position in life, and maybe the human race. And so I, I would say pay attention. It's going to be a test. And here's where I read from. Uh, Ezekiel uh, 22 and talking about the prophets, there is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion tearing at the prey. They have devoured souls, not paying attention. With their, with their folly, they're killing people. They're, they're losing people. They've taken a treasure of precious things, and they have made many widows in the midst thereof. And then the priests, they violated God's law, they have profaned my holy things. They, they have uh, put no difference between the holy and the unholy. Isaiah says, chapter 5, that, that 
men would call good, evil, and evil good. We're there. It's hard to... They passed a law not long ago in Congress that you are, you are allowed to lie about your opponent and have no consequence. You're not, you're not to have any consequence. And so I believe that, that we, we are living in another time that's actually like that, and it's this time, that God is trying to impress upon uh, the world and the church to pay attention about what's going on with your politicians, with the priest, and with the prophets. And the last one was their princess uh, in the midst of her. They're like wolves. They, uh, they shed blood. They destroy souls. They get dishonest gain. Look, just Google all your senators and all your representatives and see how much money they make. They only make $174,000. Nancy Pelosi's got $121 million. How do you get that? You do it by uh, figuring out some way to use the chair that you sat in to get, what, what did it say? Uh, un, ungotten, ill-gotten gain. And so that's why I want you to remember that as we go along, that that's what, where my heart is at. And so I want to warn you, I want you to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I want to help you to see uh, some things that should tell us what time it is. And Paul said it like this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, This know also that in the last days, uh, my church, I make them say that with me, last days, perilous times, peril is uncontrollable, things happening at the same time, dangerous things. For men shall be, the word last days is the word eschatos. It means the last of the last. It's a, it's a mariner, ter, maritime term, uh, term that it's, if you got a row of harbors, the eschatos is the last harbor. So in the last of the last days, it means the last of the last, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient unto parents. This is why you've got a 50-year-old becoming a patriarch for over a little gang, and they'll go to McDonald's, blow somebody's brains out, and then go home and, and play some music. That's where we live. Uh, un, un, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, uh, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, no allegiance to anything, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, you you try to sneak in and see a dirty movie or do something weird or drink some beer. Nah, you can just go with mom and dad's now getting a $3,000 water bed and turn on anything you want with your girlfriend and act a fool. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. For this sort uh, are those that go into houses and lead away silly women. They're ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So let me, let me encourage you to look around you. I mean, the, just the violence, the full birth abortion that a woman, if she wants a baby killed after it's born, she can, she can have that done if she consents. The baby has no say. What scares me, over 51% over of America believes that saying. You can almost hear them screaming, I want blood. I want blood. When, it, when, when Roe versus Wade was shot down, the nation went crazy. Women went crazy. People be, and so the president has said if he's elected in 2025, if he if, uh, four and go, goes back in 25, that he will restore. And that's something to look forward to. Twice in history that's happened. Once with Pharaoh, hell can feel, hell can feel the deliverer coming. And another time uh, with Herod when he felt Jesus coming. Hell feels the power of the church coming. And it wants to kill everything it can. So I hope you'll be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and stay in touch with us. See you next time.